welcome. Today we'll be looking at the wonderful world and whimsical art of Jim Yeager. Welcome to the program, Jim. Thank you. Hi, I'm Andrea Obstin, and today we're going to be talking to this former dental researcher and academic who uses a combination of photography, technology, and his own unique world of everyday objects to collect astounding images. The collection of his works will be on display at Duncaster during July and August. So Jim, tell us a little bit about this art and why you do what you do. It's uh, derived from my uh, career in laboratory research in which I documented all of the things I was doing with photography, usually with a microscope of one kind or another, electron microscope, light microscope. And so at the end of my career, I had a huge collection of Kodachrome images, mm -hmm. some of which were beautifully colored and interesting patterns. And um, I converted them all into digital files because we were lecturing then with com computer-driven projections. And uh, so I had this collection. I wasn't doing anything particular with them. But I had a, a, a brother-in-law who was a semi-professional photographer who was using Photoshop and doing really interesting things with his photographs. And he taught me a little bit about Photoshop, and that got me started on uh, using these images in, in other ways. So this is really a second chapter for you, uh, very different from your first chapter. Yes, yes, because it's, it's entertainment, uh, art-oriented rather than you know, science-oriented. Right. So it's a different attitude about the, about the same material. Essentially using a different part of your brain, too, I would I think. I suppose, yes, yep, yes. Absolutely. So you have an example here of some earlier uses of those images that you talked yes, about. Tell us a little yes. bit about that. It's the image on the left, and uh, it, it's, you can see that the, it looks different. The top one, which is the natural photograph, and the bottom one, okay. which is the manipulated photograph. Uh, but and it, doesn't, it doesn't mean much. It's not interesting. It's not, you know, it doesn't pique your curiosity particularly. But if you know the story, it's a different thing. It, it's a tooth. That's, I mean, a, that's a tooth? It's a tooth. Oh. It's a very thin slice through a tooth. And the, it's viewed in ultraviolet light, and there's a, a, a drug that's locked into the tooth as it's forming that makes the bright lines. This is a, from a child who has been, uh, during that period, was treated with antibiotics to, for acne. Okay. Now, the tooth was extracted for orthodontic treatment, and I made the thin section, made the photograph. Then the bottom one, which is the manipulated photograph, you can see that first of all, the bright areas, the stripes in the top, are now dark. They're purple in the bottom. Yes. So I reverse light and dark, reverse the background. Then I change the color of everything from yellow to various shades. And of would magenta. you experiment uh, with the yes, technology? Yes, yes, absolutely. Various ways to change the color uh, in Photoshop, you know, manipulating the image. And then finally, I superimpose that grid, which is sort of a stained glass or yes, I like tile, that effect. Tile image. Well, so if you, if you know something about it, it's a much more interesting image. Yeah, it, that's an interesting yeah. point. But and it's so only it's interesting to my colleagues who know something <laughs> about the science that you know, most people don't care about. So <clears throat> it looks like over your career, you started using photography as a tool. Yes. But you now have a different attitude and a different use for it in your yes, second chapter. Yes, yes. Yes, what I'm looking for now is uh, ideas in the photographs that are not obvious, that are not necessarily the intent of the photographer who took the photograph, even my intent. I mean, normally when I take a photograph, it's just to get material, raw material, ah. so that I can take it into Photoshop or in whatever program I'm using and manipulate it and, and try to withdraw from it some information or, or ideas that weren't, there obvi weren't obvious in the original scene. So where do you get your photographs? Do you well, take them all? Yes, I, ta I do take them all. And, uh, you know, I get them, I do a lot of little day trips to sites that I think would be interesting. Sometimes I go for two or three days, go to museums or natural places and just take pictures of objects or scenes. Uh, I never, I almost never photograph people or animals. Uh, it's stuff. I photograph it's stuff. stuff. Yeah. And when you see an image, do you already know what you're going to do or no. do you just take a lot of for raw I material. Never know. I you never, never know. know. I I'm intrigued by patterns and I'm intrigued by colors and anything that's amusing. That's where the whimsical comes in. That's Maybe, where the whimsical comes in. My right. hope is that the that the art when you look at the art that it, you'll smile or say that's interesting. I'm not looking for any uh, you know deep art impact here. I'm looking for entertainment more than than anything else. 
And eventually, if you look at a series of those images, like in a show, I'm hoping you'll think, well, what is there in that image that I would miss just by glancing at it? Because there's always something that's been done to the image to try to change the impact that it has on the viewer. Are you happy when I go, oh, that's a, yes. or would you rather I didn't know that's a? <laughs> what really bothers me, I'd like somebody to, know, to acknowledge it, what really bothers me is when, it, if I put up a new photo in my hallway and 20 people walk by and have nothing to say, don't even notice it, that's devastating. If you don't make an impact. Right, that's devastating. You'd rather they say, that's odd. Or that's terrible. Or that's or, terrible, yes, but at least that, that, it, yes. th that's the artist in that's you. That's right. So, um, you clearly use different developments in technology. You started with Photoshop, yes. but it sounds like you're bringing, uh, you're bringing in other technological changes. I, I'm a technology-oriented guy, so whenever some new photographic possibility comes up, I usually give it a try. Um, and of course, with digital cameras, there's a huge variety of ways in which the camera can control and manipulate the image. So while you're taking while it? While you're taking the picture. Okay. And it's pretty much, you can control some of it, but in mo many cameras it's fairly automatic. Uh, for example, one of my favorite cameras now recognizes when there's a lot of contrast between background and the subject or something like that. And it will take a series of photos at different exposures. Automatically, and basically? Automatically. Wow. And it superimposes the images so that you don't lose the detail ah. in the bright background or the dark shadows or something of that kind. And all of that technology, you know, continues to develop, as do the programs. I mean, the manipulation programs. So do you th do most of your work after the fact? Oh, yes. Okay, and, yeah. you'll, and you're using a computer? Yes, I can sometimes take an image and get caught up in manipulating it for hours, you know, <laughs> just to see what I can get out of it and what, uh, you know, and, and when I see something interesting, I stop. I figure that's, that's it. You just anticipated my next question was, where do you get your ideas? Yes. It's just if something looks like it has possibilities, you'll take a photograph. Yes. Right, and then I try various ways of, of, of modifying that image and uh, until I see something that I think is interesting. Sometimes nothing happens. You know, I do a number of changes and I just, that's a photo that gets discarded. I, yep. I don't find anything in it. Now you said you, do you take all your photos with a, with a, a digital camera? Do you use your phone? Uh, uh, mainly I use a digital camera, a single lens reflex digital camera. Right. Uh, and I do that largely because you get a, 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 an image with a lot of information and so you can enlarge it. Okay. That's really the tree. And you can, yeah. you can crop it. I can take the center third of something and enlarge it up to two by three Because you've, yeah, you've got from the a, detail from a regular camera. Uh, but there's no reason why, for example, I've done a number of, I had a period when I did almost everything with a photocopier. I just put images on the copier and copied them and in color, and then I take those images and bring them into Photoshop. Wow. And there's a different kind of photography, but it was very interesting. You I, really are I, playing I, there. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, and, and are you a snob about photos that are taken on a camera, on, on no, a no, phone? No, 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 no. Uh, the iPhone, the, the major disadvantage to me of the smartphone camera was that for years they didn't have a uh, stabilizing system. Yes. Most modern cameras will remove, if you have a slight tremor, which I do, it'll remove that tremor so the image isn't always blurred. Okay. But s s most recent, recent smartphones do do that now, so they're getting better and better. And they're taking bigger and bigger, more and more information in the image. In fact, one of these, this one on, on the right. That one over there? That's a cell phone, but that's not a photograph. That's a, there's an, I have a cell phone app I call Kaleidoscope, and it lets you do doodles. And this is a oh, doodle. That's the way you were talking about the phone. When you're sitting, you know, in a waiting room somewhere and with nothing to do, I doodle on this. And that's a doodle. That's, that's a doodle. That's quite a doodle. And I take, then I make the doodle on my phone and I email it to my computer. And then in Photoshop, I can do whatever I want to with it. Wow. Well, talk about the, the <coughs> other two images. Well, this illustrates a couple of, uh, there are a lot of things you can do with, with images. You can superimpose several images. That's always very interesting. Yes. Or you can isolate an item from one image and move it into another. Okay. And this one, the second one here, yeah. is it, uh, uh, the background is a rest stop. I was in Arizona, <laughs> stopped at this rest, it's an Arizona highway rest stop. The other image is a photograph of a astronaut suit, which I think I took in a Hartford museum. So I isolated the image of the astronaut and I put him in the rest stop. And this is 
this title, this one is a rest stop near Cape Canaveral. I love it. And this is the astronaut in the rest stop. So it com just combines two images that it, I, I, I like. I took the first image, the rest stop, because of all the repetition. The yes, shadow. I like the patterns. Uh, but then I saw an opportunity to do something else with it. That's wonderful. And the jukebox, talk about yeah, that. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a, a jukebox is in the, uh, in the Antique Radio Museum in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And I photographed the jukebox. I just, you know, it's a tr classic Wurlitzer jukebox. And then I, I, uh, I added a filter that sort of made it an antique, that's mm -hmm. sort of a green in the bottom of the grill, the greeny antique. So that's not the colors of it at all? It's the, it's the colors, but I've changed, I blurred the background, and I made a paint effect, a painter effect, I think probably paint daubs as if it's done with a, with a, a sponge brush. Right. Uh, in order to give the effect, uh, an arty effect to the jukebox itself. The colors, I don't recall that I changed because they were brilliant. They were fine. To oh, it with. was the original colors. Yeah. Okay. So that's one of the things I really like. This one's, the, the astronaut shows patterns. This right. one shows colors. Right. And are, the, are these in the show at Yes, these, these are. These three are the first. The, oh, these yeah. three are in the show. Yes. And yes. the show is July and August. Correct. And if you have the opportunity, I would welcome people to come and meet you and talk about it on July I 24th would, I would welcome at 4 o'clock. We have a reception that yes. you'll be uh, yep. talking a little bit about the art and how it's created. Um, do you ever take what I'd call straight photography? Just take a picture or does yes, that bore you? Yes. No, it's, it, you know, I'm not excited about it, but I, I, I do it. I, I write for a couple of newsletters mm -hmm. and you know, I take photographs of events or people or things okay. that happen, so I do that. Uh, I'm, I'm never the one they ask to take family photos. I was about to, that was going to be no. my next question, did no. you get roped into to family photos? No, but that's because all my kids have iPhones and they're taking hundreds of photos every time we get together. Yep. So nobody needs me to take family photos. It just doesn't happen. But your family actually has books of your photos. You've done a yes. number of photo books. Yes. Talk about those. Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> when I do photography, I, you know, I find an image that I like and now I've got, I usually make a print, and now I've got this print, so, so what? So what? Unless I can get somebody to look at it, it's, you know, there's not much to it. There's a limit to how many I can put on my walls, and there's a limit, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this show, because there's a chance for people. More walls. Show people, more walls, <laughs> right. But I do print, and I, I make books, you know, you do it online, it's a very simple process. So I'm, I group pictures when I have, uh, when I see I have some, a book on architecture, I have a book on natural scenes, and some on just whimsical stuff. And anyhow, I make the books with uh, 20 or 30 or 40 photos in each one, and I distribute them to my family. I'd have no idea what happens. You have no idea, yeah. but you, have you seen them uh, on the coffee tables? Yeah, I see them on the okay, coffee tables. Okay, all right. And well, I we, also, you don't know if they put them out just because you're no, coming. No, and I also put them in the library in the community I live in. Okay, and I know so people see those because people comment about it. So the books are in the Duncaster Library? Yes, they are. Oh, well, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. So, speaking of Duncaster, let me review when people yes. can come and see these. Fine. July and August, every single day uh, during the week, 9 to 5, they can come and stop by. Mm -hmm. If they'd like to meet you and, and be part of the reception and learn about it, that's July 24th. Um, so, the last question I have for you is, this is the second chapter. Yes. Talk about what it's like, why someone would develop a chapter 2. I'm not much for giving advice, let me tell you that. Uh, I've had phases uh, in my retirement where I spent days reading, really got into some aspect of reading, and, uh, and that consumed me for right. periods of time. And I, I, you know, the photography thing turned up by accident, but it's equally interesting and challenging. And for me, unless I'm learning something new, I'm, I feel incomplete. I keep, you know, whatever it is I'm doing, as long as it's progressing, if I'm getting involved in new technology, new ideas, uh, just sharing with other people. And of course, it keeps you engaged with other people, with your environment. That's one good thing about photography. It's a, it has an external aspect. Yes. <clears throat> you have to get outside of your own home, your own community. So it, 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 it becomes engaged. a social thing, too. Yes, yeah. it does. Yes. I think the other yeah. thing I'm hearing you say is that it fires up the brain. Yes. In, in a new way. I mean, that's what yeah. I think of. This is a very different way of looking at the world than you, when you're jo in your Probably. job yes. in academia yes. and in dental research. Absolutely, yeah. In research, it's, the whole goal is accuracy. 
<laughs> this one, it's something entirely different. Oh, that's different. interesting. So that's a good that's a good recipe for a second chapter. Yeah. Take another part of of your brain, brain. fire it up, and yeah. go for a different kind of attribute. Yep. Well, Jim, it's been great talking with you, uh, and I hope you've enjoyed us. We're talking a little bit about a display that will be at Duncaster in July and August called The Whimsical Art of Jim Yeager. Jim, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Andrea. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.